Hi, this is Janet Swanson. I am here today to encourage you, inspire you, and cheer you on, and to let you know you deserve to be happy, to be healed, and to live your life in freedom, free from the pain of your past, free from fear, free from all those voices that tell you, I can't. So let's break the silence and expose the darkness that has held you in confinement way too long. Your life matters. Your story matters. Your voice matters. I believe in you. And most of all, God believes in you. Welcome to One Voice Makes a Difference podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome to One Voice Makes a Difference podcast. I am super excited that you joined us today because we have an incredible word for you. I believe that it's going to be life changing. Today, I have a guest with me, and his name is Prophet Kevin Williams, and he is the pastor of Encounter Church. Kevin, how's it going today? Hey, it's going well, and thank you so much for having me on the podcast today. It's truly an honor to be here. Thank you for coming. It's such an honor to have you here, and um, you know, we've been friends for a long time, and we've known each other for a long time, and I have seen what God has done in your life, and I am amazed by the work that God has done. And so I just want you to share your story with us a little bit today. Before we get started, though, I did want to give you some statistics. Did you know that one out of every four girls is sexually abused before the age of 12? And one out of seven boys out of, before the age of 12? Wow. And it's, it's crazy that the church has been silent on that for so long. And from my experience, I have seen a lot of adults suffer in their um, marriages and just emotionally because they have not dealt with the trauma that they've been through as a child. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to address trauma. And for you guys that are listening out there, I want you to know that your life matters. Your life is important. Your life is important to God. And we believe that God can do anything and that He is able to heal you of the pain from your past and not just heal you but make the devil regret the day he ever laid hands on you wow. and I believe that Amen. and it's it's amazing though Kevin in our childhood the Word of God says train a child in the way they shall go and they'll never depart mm-hmm. and that's great and wonderful when you are um, forming and shaping them with the Word of God but what happens to a child when they're not formed with the Word of God. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Well, I mean, in the book of Proverbs, it clearly says, I think it's Proverbs 4, um, it says that um, out of the heart flows the issues of life. Mm -hmm. And there are things that happen to us when we're younger. There are experiences that we go through. There are relationships that are not beneficial. They're Mm -hmm. more toxic. Uh, of that variety and what happens is we begin to form issues within Mm -hmm. our heart and if those issues aren't dealt with Mm -hmm. what happens is those issues manifest themselves later in life Mm -hmm. and so when it comes to anything that happens in your childhood that maybe there's something secret that happened in your childhood maybe there's uh, there was an argument that happened that you replay in your mind over mm-hmm. the years mm-hmm. and it hasn't been spoken about mm-hmm. you know those things they form a certain mindset mm-hmm. within us it forms and it resurfaces later in life yes it you does know? and so uh, what we need to do and what has happened in my life specifically is once I began to deal with the inner dialogue the issues of life flowing from my heart mm-hmm. when I began to deal with those things then I began to experience what life is truly about. Um, And a lot of issues that I had uh, later in life were coming from those experiences when I was younger. Um, And I know that there's many people out there right now, and especially my my men, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of things that have happened over the course of the years. Um, And maybe you're experiencing anger now. Maybe you're experiencing, uh, you know, a lack of self-worth. You don't Mm -hmm. feel like you can really succeed, you know. Uh, Maybe it's a a subtle irritation, you Mm -hmm. know. At the end of the day, everything's perfect. Everything's everything's great. But yet there's an irritation that's deep inside. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, listen, there are things that flow out of the heart. When we begin to deal deal with those things, Mm -hmm. that's when we can uh, really experience life. 
I just love it when God shows us what's in our own hearts mm -hmm. because usually it's a big mess. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and God wants to heal us. You know, mm -hmm. um, I have this saying in my book, your past is not your past until you're healed from it. And that's one mm -hmm. thing that the Lord showed me, that we take our past into our present yeah. and into our future. And when we come across situations in our present, we have so much pain from our past that our circumstance and what's going on right now is magnified because we're not healed from our past. And we carry it into our present and then we carry it into our future. Then our identity is formed all around that. Yeah. So that's why we're here today. We want to reach out to that one boy or that one girl that um, in their childhood, there was a pattern shaped for them and it's not their fault. I want to say that right up front. When things happen to you and you're a child, it is not your fault. The enemy has been telling you you're guilty. It's too shameful to talk about and that you did something to make it happen. I just want to put the devil in his place and said, hey, no, he is a liar. This is not your fault. And there is no shame in Christ Jesus. Come on. It's all been, you know, taken care of on the cross. All of yep. that shame, he bore it all. But our stories are powerful. Oh, yeah. And I think it's so important for us to be transparent. How do you know what God can do if they don't know where you came from? Mm -hmm. Like the children of Israel came out of Egypt. Right. And the Bible clearly talks about Egypt and what Egypt did to them. And you see the storyline of the children of Israel of their life. And they talk about it. And even in the New Testament, they're still talking about it. You were this and now you're that, you know, and I brought you out of Egypt. And so I have a question for you guys that are listening. What is your Egypt? What is God bringing you out of? And I want you to know that your story is powerful and that um, what you have been through is important and to be vulnerable to talk about and you know tell people what God has brought you through yeah. in Revelation 12 it says we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony yeah. so our word is our testimony is very very powerful Amen. and Kevin I just want you to tell us a little bit about yourself because now you have a strong prophetic mantle upon your life and you are pastoring a thriving church, the Encounter Church right here in Statesboro. And um, you, you're you seeing God do miraculous things every day, yeah. you know. Yeah. But I want people to understand and know that even though you have a past and you've been traumatized, that does not and it, it doesn't have to define your future. Yeah. And it can't, we can't let our past and the things that happen to us dictate our present and our future. Yeah. But a lot of times, it does. It does. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we're here today to break that over people's lives. Yeah. And we, we just tell us a little bit yeah. about your story. Listen, uh, for everyone who's listening right now, what I want you to do is something very simple. I want you to sit back, I want you to relax, and I want you to just hear what I have to say. Mm -hmm. You know, take blinders, take filters off. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I want to speak from my own personal experience a wit as a witness to a person who went through a lot of different things mm -hmm. to a person now who no longer has those things uh, negating uh, the blessing, mm -hmm. you know, on my life. Mm -hmm. uh, I went through tons of things. I have stories on stories on, of stories mm -hmm. of uh, what happened to me for years and things that happen years later, you know? Uh, but where I'm sitting now, you would have never thought I would be the person doing what I do now. Mm -hmm. uh, even my voice was different. Yeah, I sound different now. You do. I think different now. Mm -hmm. I hold myself different now. I really want to share with you my experience as a witness that there is hope. Yes, Amen. And in order to hear hope, you have to, you have to hear it. Mm -hmm. You have to listen. So I want you to take your blinders and your filters off. Don't let any title, don't let any uh, preconceived notion hold you back from this yes, truth. Amen. And so I, if you can just do that with me, mm -hmm. sit back, relax, hear this story, 
get every distraction out of the way. Mm -hmm. Don't let anyone hold you back from hearing this story. Uh, I know it's going to bless you. Mm -hmm. It has blessed me. Mm -hmm. Um, And one thing that I've learned in my life is you listen to those who have succeeded. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to uh, these past hurts and these past pains, they have no hold on me now. Amen. Uh, and, And I say that boldly. And it's not by my own strength that it happened. And I'll get into it just now. When speaking about my childhood, you know, I had a very, very, very fantastic family. Mm -hmm. I had two parents who taught me, they trained me, uh, uh, you know, what they gave me opportunity in life, Mm -hmm. you know. Um, And there's many people out there right now who you have fantastic parents. Mm -hmm. Um, Some don't have fantastic parents, Mm -hmm. but uh, there's many people out there that have opportunity. But just because you have fantastic parents and you have opportunity, because we live in a world that has many, many, many different deficiencies. Mm-hmm. We have, uh, people have hearts, they've been through abuse, mm-hmm. they've been through all kinds of different things, and that bleeds out. Mm-hmm. Just because you live in your white picket fence home, mm-hmm. you're right. still uh, exposed to things yeah. that can leave an impression on you. Absolutely. You know, uh, and so I had a fantastic family. We had, uh, we had money. You know, uh, I was never really lacking mm-hmm. at all mm-hmm. uh, in, in any shape or, or form, you know, mm-hmm. and I had Christian parents. But regardless of me having Christian parents, mm-hmm. um, there were abuses that happened to me. Mm-hmm. And the statistics show that abuse happens mainly through those whom you at least expect. Yes. Um, and for me, you know, uh, that happened with me with a dear family member. I won't go into specifics per se, mm-hmm. but I suffered sexual abuse mm-hmm. at a very young age mm-hmm. for years. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I want to say three years mm-hmm. in, if I can really remember, you know, mm-hmm. three years in particular. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't uh, a one time, it was a multiple time. You know, there are things that transpired years later mm-hmm. because of that incident. Um, you know, uh, it for me, going through abuse, it opened the door. Mm-hmm. It opened the door. You know, uh, uh, I want to speak to my men out there right now. Yes. Anything that you have, you're not able to speak about, is a thing that will affect your life. That's right. You know, uh, I was thinking that if no one understood, no one or no one understands, I don't need to really speak about what happened. I can put that on the shelf, Mm -hmm. you know, um, and when you put something on the shelf and you keep it hidden, what happens is you develop, um, you develop a mentality about it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, what happened for me later is as I grew and I, uh, I want to say around the middle, middle school age, Mm -hmm. what happened to me because that door was open, Mm -hmm. you know, I didn't really suffer, um, any anger or anything like that towards my abuser, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, I didn't, you know, I didn't feel any certain type of way about the abuse itself, Mm -hmm. you know, um, I came to realize that that was wrong. Mm -hmm. I came to realize that, uh, that is, that's something I didn't, I didn't, was not fun. I didn't, I didn't Mm -hmm. want those things. Mm -hmm. Um, but what happened was it opened a door. Mm -hmm. What is the door I'm talking about? You know, in middle school, you're joking with your friends, Mm -hmm. you know, and your friends begin to call you a name or Mm -hmm. say you're less of man. Mm -hmm. But because you have something hidden, Mm -hmm. when they speak that thing, Mm -hmm. they say you're less of man. Now you begin to think, am I less of man? Mm -hmm. Because I remember this happened to me. Mm. Wow. So it's, you know, uh, for me, that's where things began to, to really start. Because I had an open door in my life, there were things that I would come into normal situations is it is it good for kids to joke around? Is it is it uh, normal for kids to to pick on each other? Yes. Is it good? No. Mm-hmm. It's a terrible thing, but it happens. Mm-hmm. Listen, because hidden things, and I and I hope you can really hear me. The hidden things uh, are what are touched on yeah. when you go through the uh, trials of life. Mm-hmm. Everybody will go through things in their lives, but the hidden things when they're touched. And they're not dealt with. They're not released. They're not talked about. They're not, uh, you you don't get those things off your chest. Those are the things that are touched. And those are the things that end up shaping you. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I was shaped by the hidden things Mm -hmm. when I was younger. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, I wasn't 
very, I wasn't angry about the, the situation, maybe angry for a time, you mm -hmm. know, but it, anger didn't grip my heart. What gripped my heart was when that thing was touched on. Yeah. The suggestions that came because the door was open. Yeah. So, you know, I went through a, a lifestyle of, you know, searching for my identity, mm -hmm. you know, a lifestyle of rejection. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I felt that no one could could love me, you know, uh, because of something I hadn't shared. I hadn't talked about. Mm -hmm. It wasn't resolved yet, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm just hoping uh, as we get into this thing, if you're sitting here and you have some things that are not spoken about yeah. that you haven't talked about with someone, understand you have a responsibility to yourself. Mm -hmm. It is for love of yourself yeah. that you begin to talk about those things, mm -hmm. um, that you get those things off your chest. Um, and then uh, we'll, we'll talk more about how, um, once I begin to talk about these, uh, about these things with the proper people, mm -hmm. you, need, you need strong leaders in your life, yeah. with the proper people who care mm -hmm. and who won't damage you absolutely when you speak yeah um, and we'll get into that a little bit later um, but I want to encourage someone mm -hmm. that the thing that you think should not be talked about is mm -hmm. the very thing that should be talked about mm -hmm. for me when I was uh, younger and those things were touched on I, I suffered confusion mm -hmm. identity loss I didn't know who I was you know I didn't know uh, if if you know if I was I, I just remember being young and being so confused, you know, mm -hmm. like, wait, wait, this happened to me, mm -hmm. you know, uh, so does that mean I can't have a girlfriend? Right. You know, all, all different kinds of different, right. all, all, all kinds of things, you know, um, and stuff really a kid shouldn't, shouldn't deal with. That's right. Uh, and it was painful, yeah. you know, it was, look, it opened the door for shame on my life. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I was a spectacular athlete, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I remember um, I, schools wanted me to play play for them mm -hmm. you know but although I had many things that uh, God given talents that I should celebrate the Lord for mm -hmm. celebrate that I had those talents I could not celebrate because I had a door open for shame yeah because of a hidden thing yeah um, you know so a lifestyle of rejection mm -hmm. a lifestyle of of shame yeah. guilt you know a lifestyle of searching for identity uh, I was in certain things that I even I shouldn't have been in you know mm -hmm. you find yourselves because of hidden things mm -hmm. being in places you shouldn't be mm -hmm. you know it's wrong to be there but you feel like because there's something inside of you that has not been dealt with mm -hmm. that you have to be there that, that's right you know uh, and so that that is what happened with me just at that age you know mm -hmm. and it and it continued into college mm -hmm. where I had more resources yeah. you know when I had more resources you know I did the whole club hopping you know mm -hmm. I was in Atlanta I was an Atlantic child mm -hmm. so I was I was in the clubs I was out of the clubs you know I was in uh, uh, what you would call straight clubs I was in gay clubs mm -hmm. I was you know I, I was everywhere. trying to f everywhere trying to find myself mm -hmm. you know uh, and uh, I, I didn't know where it would end up Mm -hmm. You know, it opened the door for judgment. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by judgment? I think the biggest things that played my life was rejection and judgment. Mm -hmm. I remember saying out loud, uh, and this is, this is, I mean, it, it shaped a lot of my reality. I remember saying out loud, I will never be like the person who did this to me. Wow. And what happened was that door was open. Mm -hmm. To the point that whenever you say, I will never be like somebody, mm -hmm. you become just like them. That's right. In some shape or form, you mm -hmm. become just like them. Right. What happens? There's a spiritual law. Mm -hmm. Whether you're a Christian or a non-Christian, mm -hmm. the thing you judge mm -hmm. is the thing you'll be measured by. Wow. It's, it's spiritual. Yeah. You know? It is. Um, when I was younger, I didn't know that there were spiritual things. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought life was just what I saw with my eyes. Mm -hmm. um, it was only when I came to know Christ mm -hmm. that things changed for me. And we'll get into that a little bit later. Mm -hmm. But I just want to speak on this concept mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. I remember saying to myself, I will never be like this person who did this to me. Mm -hmm. I'll never be like that guy. You know? That's right. And what happened the minute... I said that. Mm -hmm. I remember things radically, drastically began to change for me. Mm -hmm. My whole personality began to shift. Mm -hmm. Things, suggestions started coming to me. People started coming to me. It was like I couldn't get out of a cert, that lifestyle. I couldn't get out of the the, tem, or the temptation or the suggestions that mm -hmm. I can't be a normal I can't be a normal guy mm -hmm. and have a girlfriend. Right. You know, uh, 
and uh, and to be proud of mm-hmm. of who I was. You right. know, uh, it was like now everything was accelerated. Yeah. Now uh, my friend groups, you know, uh, mm-hmm. my friend groups began to change. My life began to spiral. Mm-hmm. You know, to mm-hmm. the point where I looked into the mirror and I, I said, you know, this is not, this is, I don't like this person. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know if you're listening to this and you look in the mirror and you say, I don't like this person. Right. You know, I was there. You know, I, I remember in college, uh, you know, betrayal after betrayal. Remember, the my hidden thing opened up the door for rejection. Yeah. I didn't feel like anyone could really love me. So mm. therefore, I didn't really love. Mm. When you don't love, you don't get love back. Mm. When you don't get love back, you'll always suffer from rejection. Wow. Always, you've never, you've never, you know. Uh, even with my parents, my parents loved me dearly, but I didn't love. Yeah. You know, uh, because I had hidden things. I didn't feel worthy of love. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, and I hope this is speaking to someone. I hope this is speaking to even my pastors. Mm-hmm. You know, even as a pastor, I know now how important it is to begin to uh, deal with the issues of life, mm-hmm. the hidden things. Yeah. Um, and I, I thank God that now I have individuals in my life that I can, I can be 100% transparent with 100%, right. not 90, That's right. not 80, That's right. 100%. When I'm 100% transparent, there are things God mm-hmm. promises. Right. And so I want to speak to someone right now. If this is your story, if this is similar, mm-hmm. if you feel a stirring in your heart, mm-hmm. there is 100% hope. One hundred percent transformation yeah. or transformation, mm-hmm. um, and I want to get that through to you, yes. um, because I am a living product and witness to the mm. hope that I uh, came into contact with. You know, Kevin, as you're talking, um, what came to my mind and my heart was in the beginning, God looked on the earth and He saw that it was empty and void. And the Bible says he moved upon it, Mm -hmm. not just moved, but he hovered Mm -hmm. over it. And I want that person to listen to what I'm about to say, because you've been saying that the thing that I'm going through is too dark. It's too shameful. But God was attracted in the beginning to what was dark, empty and void. And he came to it. He moved upon it, but not just moved upon it. He hovered over and he settled on it. And that word there, it means like um, a mama hen would incubate Mm -hmm. those little eggs. So when he moved, he was not afraid of your darkness. He was not afraid of the darkness of the world. And he moved upon it. And now he is settled upon that darkness. So I want to tell you that... God's not afraid of the darkness. He's not afraid of the things that you're hiding. Mm -hmm. And uh, he will allow you to go through a wilderness in your life. He loves you so much. So he can surface those things to bring healing to your heart. Um, Kevin, I just thank you so much for, you know, just being so open and vulnerable with us and telling us that story because somebody out there is going to really need to hear this. Can you tell us what happened in the transition? Mm -hmm. Um, Did somebody witness to you? Did you just have a dream? Did you wake up one day and go, I don't want this anymore? What happened for the transition? Um, You know, I wanted to to just kind of piggyback on what you said just there. Listen, this is the heart of what, what, even what you're saying there. You know, God works everything out for our good. Yes. You know, I think a lot of people, when they go through a bunch of traumatic experiences, Mm -hmm. you know, trauma is categorized into many different forms and levels yes you know listen you can get in an argument and suffer trauma you know uh it's all about the person Mm -hmm. you know what what affects me may not affect you Mm -hmm. you know um but you can suffer trauma from Mm -hmm. certain things Mm -hmm. um there's levels to it you know you may not have had abuse Mm -hmm. but you may have had one specific argument when you were a kid Mm -hmm. and it it did something to your heart and now it's affecting you today. Yeah. Listen, you may think at that time, why did God let that happen? Mm-hmm. Listen, God works everything out for our good. Yes. The issue that we fail to understand is that there's an enemy mm-hmm. and that not everyone means you well. Mm-hmm. And it's not that they don't mean you well. Listen, 
there's a bunch of broken people. Mm -hmm. You are, as a broken person, you are around broken people. Mm -hmm. They don't mean to hurt you, mm -hmm. but the enemy will use their hearts to hurt you. Yes. But I thank God that he's a God who would work all things out for your mm -hmm. good. He has an ultimate goal, and mm -hmm. that is goodness. Yes. Goodness for your life. Um, and that's what happened to me. Mm. I stepped into God's goodness. How? Yeah. How? Uh, <laughs> listen, listen, I remember being in college, you know, uh, and I, I'm telling you, I was, I was going through a time, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and someone brought the word of God to me, mm -hmm. you know, and he didn't just, if you're thinking here, I'm, we're here to convince you into Christianity, mm -hmm. you got the wrong idea. <laughs> That's right. Listen, if I can convince you into Christianity, someone can convince you out. That's right. I don't want you to have a head knowledge. Listen, I'm a witness of something supernatural. Mm -hmm. You need to understand. Listen, Same. in where we experience God moving tangibly, supernaturally, daily. If you mm -hmm. think miracles are dead, you've got the wrong. Mm -hmm. Listen, you can't even talk to me. That's I've seen right. them with my eyes. Right, right. I've seen them. Mm -hmm. God has used me for them. Mm -hmm. God has used my staff for them. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and so this should bring you hope. I hope right now you're starting to lean back. And you're starting to relax mm -hmm. and understand, wait a minute, there is a hope for me. Mm -hmm. I don't have to continue to deal with what I'm dealing with yeah. in the fashion that I'm dealing with. Amen. Listen, for me, uh, someone brought the word of God to me. They spoke to me about Jesus, mm -hmm. about who he is, that he's the actual son of God. Mm -hmm. What does that mean to you? Mm. What, did that, what did that mean to me at the time? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I didn't, I didn't. Uh, I didn't, you know, I thought I was a Christian. Right. I really thought I was a Christian. Mm -hmm. I argued people. I remember arguing people mm -hmm. for, uh, for, for the Lord. Yeah. You know, I, I would, I would, you know, get my point across like, no, Jesus is real and, and mm -hmm. these different things, but I had no relationship with him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had a head knowledge, Yeah. but I didn't have a tangible experience, mm -hmm. you know, and it's been my heart since that day, since having a tangible experience with God mm -hmm. to give others a tangible experience. Yes. I don't just want to talk about him. No pastor just wants to talk about Jesus. Mm -hmm. They want to give people exactly what they have. Yeah. You know, uh, and I've been unashamed since that day to do just that. Mm -hmm. And we've seen God move tangibly. Yeah. So someone brought the word to me. I remember being in a coffee shop and minded my own business, <laughs> but someone had been to one of my basketball games Mm -hmm. um, and they remembered seeing me play. You mm -hmm. know, they thought I, I played well. Uh, and I was minding my own business. I read a lot of books. I was hiding from every reality that was mm -hmm. really, sh you know, shaping my life. Mm -hmm. uh, every reality that was, uh, that I didn't want to be in, mm -hmm. you know. So I was reading my own book. I remember he leaned over, uh, uh, this guy leaned over and he said, hey, uh, you're such and such. I saw one of your games the other day. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, you know, I was very rude. I was like, do you do you mind you know uh, and long story short uh, he invited me to uh, you know play basketball mm -hmm. so I played basketball with him uh, and you know when you play basketball with someone time and time again you have basketball talk we talked on the court mm -hmm. but listen there was something about him mm -hmm. there was something that he carried mm -hmm. there was an atmosphere that he carried mm -hmm. and that atmosphere I didn't have mm -hmm. I looked at him I said everything begins to go right for this guy he does the opposite of what I think he should do, mm -hmm. and it works. Wow. The way he talks, when he talks, something in me, it like turns over. Mm -hmm. If I'm talking to you right now and you're listening and something is turning over in your spirit, mm -hmm. you, need to, you need to really grab on to what I'm yeah. about to say. Because the turning over in your, in, in your body right now, it is a supernatural thing. Mm. You have to acknowledge it. No longer suppress it. Mm. If you are hearing this right now and you begin to feel something moving inside of you, mm. you were in, in the position that I was in. You are set up right now for a turnaround in your life. Mm -hmm. Everything that you've been going through, everything that you've been struggling with, because you are now feeling what you're feeling inside of you, mm -hmm. You must know you are ready Amen. and God wants to do something mm -hmm. because I felt a stirring when he talked, when he spoke, it was like he had power in his words. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He would say one thing and I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt it mm -hmm. can be done. Yeah. The stirring in your spirit is a confirmation that what I'm speaking is true. Mm -hmm. You know, deep down inside of you, it's true. Mm -hmm. Allow yourself to believe right now. 
when this guy spoke, he had weight in his voice. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that he was trying to teach me any scripture. No, it was like he was the very scripture he talked. Mm, it was inside powerful. of him. When he spoke, I could see it clear. Mm. You know, I wasn't worried about Christian this, Christian that, religion this. I didn't care. Something he had, I wanted. Mm -hmm. It was like he had light in his eyes. Mm. I would look at him. I mean, I, it was it was so aggressive in his eyes mm -hmm. that it was like I had to turn away. Wow. I'm telling you, it was very supernatural. Mm. You know, I knew then with him talking with me, you know, he invited me to a Bible study later and, you know, there's history, you know, but I knew when he spoke, I listened. Mm. Something inside of me turned over wow. and he began to talk to me about how Jesus Christ is alive and he's well yeah. and he's seated on the mm. right hand of the father. He was mm. exhausted. He went into the ground. Mm. He, uh, he died on the cross. He went into the ground and he resurrected and now he's on the right hand of the father mm -hmm. interceding for me. That's all right. For me, yeah. He died for me, and it took on a whole new meaning. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe someone right now needs to hear this. Yeah, that Jesus Christ died for you. Mm -hmm. You know, what do I mean? He died for you. That He wants relationship with you. Mm -hmm. You know, that He He is God. Everything has been put at His foot at His feet. That's All authority right. has been given to Him. That's right. Now He can command a blessing in your life. Mm -hmm. Now He can take you from a, a life of mess into a life of glory, Amen. a life of hope, a life of, of fulfillment, a yes. life where uh, you actually know mm -hmm. who you are. Because mm. I didn't know who I was. That's right. Um, so that stirring happened for me. Mm -hmm. he, he preached Jesus. He said, Jesus is alive, man. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, cool. You know? That's I was awesome. like, I know, I know Jesus, cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, no, no, he's alive. Wow. No, he's alive. Do you know him? You know? I, I'm like, of course I know him, man. But like I would say that, but yet I'm telling you, it was like the presence of God would come around us. I mean, wow. I began to start like feeling God. Mm. I, I would say, yeah, I know Christ, but I never felt God. But here he is talking with me and I'm starting to notice that I better watch what I say <laughs> because I think God is with him. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> I, I just had a, you know, I, yeah. I, I just thought God was with him. Yeah. And I, and I said, you know, maybe if I hang around this guy, I can get to know God. Oh, that's beautiful. You know, um, listen, I didn't earn a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. I didn't earn a tangible encounter with God. Mm -hmm. I didn't earn that thing. You know, I was open. Mm -hmm. That's it. Are you open today? Mm -hmm. As you're listening to this, are you yeah. open? Yeah. You know, uh, that stirring in your, in your spirit, in your stomach. Yes, in your stomach. Those knots that you were feeling mm -hmm. and how they begin to dissipate. They begin, they begin to to uh, something begins to start tackling some things inside of you. Are you open to going through and really stepping into what you've been longing for this whole time? Mm. You've been longing for a savior, a, a solution bringer, mm -hmm. you know? And so the gospel was preached to me mm. and that started my transition. I remember having a radical encounter with God. Mm. I remember crying out to him. Uh, I, uh, I, I remember laying down one specific night in my bed and this, this was like days of doing this, mm -hmm. but I just, I just want to talk about this one spot, this mm -hmm. one time, mm -hmm. this one instance. I lay down in my bed and I remember crying myself to sleep mm -hmm. and I, I was, I was, I was kind of angry at God. I said, God, mm -hmm. where were you? Mm -hmm. You know, I got saved at 21 years of age, mm -hmm. September, you know, 21, when I was 21 years, 20, 21 years of age. And I remember saying, where were you 21 years? Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I felt you when he spoke. Ever since he spoke, and like something turned over in my in my in my spirit, and I acknowledged it, mm. it's like that same presence has been following me, mm. and I, I felt God in my room, and so I'm I'm talking with God. I'm saying, where were you 21 years? Mm. No, what? You you know what I've gone through, mm. you know? And now I'm finding out I can know you. Mm. Now I'm finding out like you're actually here with me. I feel you tangibly in my room. Yes. I remember it was a sweet presence, but then it was powerful. It was magnificent. I remember like electricity going over my body, you know? Yeah. And the power of God is in the in the room with me, you know? And I'm saying, God, where were you 21 years? Where were you? You know, I needed you. Where were yeah. you? You know? Uh, and I remember uh, that being quickly done away with. Uh, when when I began to really feel him move into my room, you know, mm -hmm. and I said, I remember I told God, I said, look, you don't have to say anything. If what he says is true, then I can trade everything that I have 
and I just believe on you and I get what you have. I said, God, take everything I have. Listen, I said, take my money. I said, take my, take, look, I don't need to play basketball anymore. Mm. I said, take my apartment. Whatever, I, whatever you need. I didn't know, I didn't know the gospel. I didn't know I didn't have to give, I didn't have to like literally sell my house and all those types of things. Right. Some of you may have to sell your house. Right. You know, listen, it was worth it to me. Mm. I said, everything that I've counted of value, mm. I say, look, God, let it be gone. It's rubbish. It's rubbish. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like Apostle Paul said, mm -hmm. I counted of nothing, no yeah. worth, no value, mm -hmm. rubbish, trash. Mm -hmm. I say, whatever I have, whatever I built up, whatever reputation I have, mm -hmm. I said, God, have it. I said, because I want this presence for the rest of my life. Yeah. I want everything you have for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I remember hearing nothing from God <laughs> that night, but his presence stayed. Yeah. You know, uh, it wasn't until uh, a Bible study later and uh, a service later that uh, that I remember God, I, me encountering God in a very vibrant way where faith in my spirit, something happened on the inside of me where I was transformed. Mm -hmm. Like my my desires on the inside of me. You know, back then I just wanted to, I wanted to party. I wanted to. Uh, to dole out the noise of the pain I felt. Yes. So I wanted to party. I wanted to sleep around. I wanted to uh, drink and mm -hmm. all those different types of things. But I had a radical encounter with God mm -hmm. uh, after that night where I began to talk with God. When I felt his presence in the room, I became aware. Mm -hmm. you know. And I remember in service uh, just saying to God, you know, look, I'm serious about what I said. I want everything. Yeah. Will you come into my life? Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't a, it wasn't a raise your hand kind of moment, mm -hmm. you know, like raise your hand if you want salvation. Listen, mm -hmm. listen, <laughs> the gospel is simple. Mm -hmm. Jesus wants you to turn to just in your heart mm -hmm. and say with your mouth that you want him in, in, in your life. Yeah. Um, and I didn't want him in my life because I was hurting. No, the presence was way, way too good. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, God is way too good. Yes. It's, it wasn't me. It wasn't about escaping. It's about I had found something better, period. Mm -hmm. I wasn't just saying, get me out mm -hmm. for, like, I didn't want to get out of jail free. Mm -hmm. No, God, I found that God was really that good. Mm -hmm. So I said, please, mm -hmm. I want that. Rest of my life, give yeah. it to me. I need it. Wow. Listen, I remember God tangibly hugging me mm -hmm. that day. Yeah. I'm saying it was like angelic encounter. Mm -hmm. I saw God literally, Jesus, hugging me, and yes. I felt his arms. Thank I remember you, him even sitting in the seat next to me. Yes. Yeah, you can call me crazy if you want, but I'm a living witness to what has happened afterwards. Mm -hmm. So you can you can bash what I'm saying, you can mm -hmm. you can argue it in your spirit or you can just take it mm -hmm. and you can enter into the same thing I walk in today. Wow. You know, and I've never been filled with so much hope, mm -hmm. so much freedom, so much uh, security mm -hmm. and uh, assurance. I, and confidence and boldness mm -hmm. since that. I, I, listen, I didn't have that before. Yeah. Where did it come from? Right. No one taught me that thing. Yeah. Nobody sat me down and said, you should be more bold. You should be more confident. No, it happened in me. It was a right. supernatural thing. Yes. Listen, Jesus Christ is a supernatural God. Mm -hmm. And everything he touches, he changes. Come on. And when he comes into your darkness and he moves upon you, one thing that just stood out to me when you said this, this man was playing basketball with you. You said that his words carried weight. Mm -hmm. And when the Bible talks about the glory of God, it means the weight of yep. God. Mm -hmm. And so you were literally experiencing the glory of God without even knowing it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because, and this man was not trying to do something. He was just being a son. Yeah, yeah. He was, he really, he, he cared about me. He really cared, he cared about, about you. me. He he saw me as a person. I remember. I mean, he treated me as a friend. Yeah. You know, he really did. He cared about me. He just wanted me to do well. Um, he never asked any questions. He could tell I would show up to play basketball drunk. Mm hmm. You know, he could tell. Uh, and you know, and we were still good. And he didn't you judge know? you. No, no, he didn't judge me at all. He didn't throw Not, stones at you. No, 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 he didn't. He didn't look. He didn't ask any questions. Wow. You know, I mean, he'd been through similar things. You yeah. know, uh, he, he was knew. a. Uh, 
he um, tore his ACL while playing for a University of Georgia. Mm -hmm. So he's a very good basketball player. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. You know, um, we had uh, a lot of good runs out there, you know, but he never, he went through some similar things, you know. He had uh, also his parents, or well, his parents um, were divorced and, you know, he went through a, a, a dark season, you know, met the Lord and, you know, so he understood, mm -hmm. you know, uh, what, what I was going through, mm -hmm. you know, and all he did was he was a friend to me and yeah. he spoke. You know, he spoke and he let the product, the substance, the supernatural substance in his life mm -hmm. speak for itself. Yeah. You know, um, listen, he didn't sit me down and say this scripture and this scripture and this scripture. He didn't say you should, you know, mm -hmm. um, you should do this or you should do that. No, 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 no. He was quiet for the most part. So you just basically hungered for what he had. Exactly. Because you could feel the glory of God on his life. Exactly. And exactly. the glory of God is what made the difference. Yeah. Listen, wow. it's... You know, because it's not about titles, it's not about labeling, you know, all those different types of things. Listen, mm -hmm. if if you are standing next to somebody and something inside of yours is saying, you know, what they're walking in, I want that thing. Mm -hmm. Go get it. Amen. Go get it. Amen. Don't let anyone stop you. Go hear what's going on in their lives. And when you hear it, grab a hold of it. Yes. The worst thing you can do is go hear it mm -hmm. and then say, well, I, I just don't know. No, yes, you know, because mm -hmm. you went and you heard. Right. You Don't think it's happened chance that you're on this mm -hmm. podcast. That's right. You know, the word says, if you have ears to hear, hear what the Lord is saying today. This podcast is called One Voice Makes a Difference. And mm -hmm. the one voice that made the difference in your life at this moment, well, the glory of God was on this man, but you said his words carried weight. That yep. means that his voice was carrying a weight and it was making a difference just by caring about you, by loving you and showing you that there's a better way yeah. and um, offering you Jesus alive, not Jesus yeah. on the cross, not Jesus in the grave, not Jesus in the baby manger, oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. Jesus alive. And he presented to you Jesus alive, that he is real yeah. and his glory is real. And you accepted that, and you started feeling this change come upon you that you desired yeah. to change. Oh, yeah. Am I correct? Oh, yeah. Listen, listen. the Jesus that I'm talking about is the anointed one. Yes. He is God. Yes. He has a supernatural power. Yes. I was encounter, encountering that supernatural power. Yes. Someone who knows Jesus, they walk in supernatural power. Mm, That's it. Amen. Listen, if you can Ooh. believe a fortune teller... Listen, you should be able to hear yes. what I'm saying right now. That's right. You have plenty of people. I know. I have friends. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's go. Let's go, you know, go to a fortune teller. Let's go. Let's go hear about future. Mm -hmm. Ah, no, 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 no. My God is the future. That's right. You know, he's bigger than all that stuff, you yeah. know? So if you can believe that, you should be able to believe what I'm saying here. That's right. You know? <laughs> Gosh. Kevin, thank you so much mm -hmm. for telling that part of your story. And yeah. I want you guys to stay tuned for episode two because in episode two, we're going to talk about how salvation led to complete deliverance in your life. Yep. Because a lot of people think, oh, well, when I get saved and I really accept Jesus in my life, then I am completely healed of everything that's ever happened to Come me. On. And let's ignore all of the symptoms and the triggers, yep. the anger and the desires that you don't know where it came from. And you're questioning, well, I'm a Christian. I had an encounter with God, but why? do I have this feeling? Why do I have this desire? Yeah. So in episode two, we're going to talk about how um, you go from salvation to deliverance. The word talks about, um, well, God is a deliverer. Come on. And he delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt. Yes. And he saved them from Pharaoh, you know? Yeah. And that's what God wants to do. But a lot of people don't like to talk about deliverance. Because when you become delivered, it means you're getting rid of the old identity and what's familiar mm -hmm. that you have hung on to for so many years yeah. because we're attracted to those familiar spirits. They yeah. become, you know, like oppressing us, yeah. you know? And so when we coming to the light, now Jesus says, now I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to take Egypt out of you. You came out of Egypt, but now I want to take Egypt out of you. Yeah. So the children of Israel went through a wilderness so that God could take Egypt out of them. That's good. And now in episode two, we're going to talk about how 
the Lord took Egypt out of Kevin. Yeah. And I'm just so excited. Hey, there may be one person right now that's saying, I want to give my life to Jesus. What would you encourage them to do at this very moment before we go? You know, accept them. Hey, don't fight it. Yeah, don't fight it. You don't need anyone to lay hands on you. You don't mm-hmm. need anyone to pray with you this second. That's right. Why don't you say outside or out loud with your voice, come into my life, Lord. Mm. Jesus, I want all that you have. Yes. You know, and watch a tangible anointing. That's the right. power of God, the presence of God come upon you yeah. right now under the sound of my voice now. Mm. Um, you don't need anyone to help you in that. That's you right. just need to help yourself. That's right. And if you felt that stirring, mm-hmm. I'm talking to you. That's it. If, mm. you, if you feel it, if you feel that stirring, it's you. Amen. Don't doubt it. You know, uh, receive it, you know, and by all means, make contact with this ministry. Mm. You know, make contact with uh, your local church mm. um, and let them know what you have experienced in your in your life. Because like we're saying in episode two, mm-hmm. there is a life now that is brand new for you. Mm-hmm. Listen, you take anything away from my childhood and the things that I went through, mm-hmm. understand that that was then, mm-hmm. but now is now. Mm-hmm. There was a life that was hidden from me mm-hmm. because of the pains and the things of the past. Mm-hmm. This life I'm in now. That's I never right. thought I would have been doing what I'm doing now, right. living how I'm living now, loving how I love now. Mm-hmm. Uh, in my own skin, I'm comfortable. That's right. You know, I never thought I would have been there. Mm-hmm. It was hidden in God. Yes. God knew. He Mm -hmm. dreamed of a life for me. Mm -hmm. And I want to encourage you right now. God has dreamed of a life for you. You know, in the book of Jeremiah and Jeremiah one, not to be long winded, Mm -hmm. but uh, 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 God encourages Jeremiah because Jeremiah was a weeping prophet. He was he was going to be used by God to really uh, to deal with the pains of Israel. Mm -hmm. What did he say to Jeremiah? He said, Jeremiah, before you were in your mother's womb, Mm -hmm. I knew you. And the word knew is yada. Mm-hmm. It means that God knew him intimately. Mm-hmm. Uh, he knew him face to face, an experiential knowing. Mm-hmm. How did how does how does this work? Listen, you don't know have, you don't have to know the details. Just understand that before Jeremiah was in the womb, mm-hmm. God knew him. He had a life planned out for him, a mm-hmm. life that was perfect. God is perfect. There's a perfect mm-hmm. life that you really are dreaming of. Mm-hmm. You're desiring. God knows this life. It's mm-hmm. hidden in Him. Mm-hmm. It's in God that this life happens. And um, he was encouraging Jeremiah that Jeremiah don't don't think this is don't think this is new. Mm-hmm. I have the keys to taking you into the life that uh, that that I have for you. Amen. You know, and um, and so the hope is listen. Your past was your past, but there is a life you you don't know yet. Mm-hmm. It's the life you've been longing for. Amen. It is a life that God had predestined before time for you to have mm-hmm. but it's your choice to pick it up amen and so uh don't be destitute any longer don't be discouraged any longer there is hope and there is a life you don't know about yet mm-hmm. so when you come to know christ now it's time to learn about that life amen and the uh and i'll and i'll share with you some keys that god has given me personally mm-hmm. when it comes to coming through the door of salvation mm-hmm. and then dealing with the issues of life so that you can experience the very supernatural life that god has planned jesus says that should i take the children's bread mm-hmm. and throw it to the dogs <laughs> What it what you have to look at the scripture. Mm-hmm. He's talking to uh, a Samaritan. He's talking to a Gentile woman. Canaanite he says woman, that's a right. Canaanite uh-huh. woman. You know, he says, "Should I take the children's bread?" Meaning, my children. He's mm-hmm. saying, "My children, their bread is deliverance." Mm-hmm. She was asking Jesus for deliverance, mm-hmm. and he was saying, "Should I take my bread that's for my children mm-hmm. and give it to just anyone?" Mm-hmm. That's what he's truly saying there. Mm-hmm. Listen. Your daily bread is deliverance. Mm-hmm. It's time to take the filters off. Mm-hmm. My daily bread was deliverance. Mm-hmm. My daily bread was freedom mm. from everything that would shackle me and hold Amen. me back from the life that God had destined for me to have. Thank you guys for joining. And uh, don't forget to join us for episode two. And don't forget to subscribe to um, our podcast so you can get more of these just like this. Yeah. All right. God bless. Thank you guys. Thank you for listening to One Voice Makes a Difference. If you enjoyed today's episode, please consider subscribing and reviewing the show on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. Tell your friends about One Voice too. Your voice helps the show reach more people to spread the gospel. Together with all of our voices, 
we can come out of the darkness and into the light. If you'd like to hear more about Janet's personal story, you can purchase her book, One Voice, on her website, JanetSwanson.org. You can also connect with her on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. Most importantly, if you are in crisis, please call the 24-7 Crisis Hotline at 1-800-273-8255 or visit suicidepreventionlifeline.org. Don't wait. Your life matters.